primera vez Por el amor de una mujer Jugué con fuego sin saber Que era yo quien me quemaba Bebí en las fuentes del placer Hasta llegar a comprender Que no era mía quien amaba Por el amor de una mujer FM, New York. I know it may be hard for you to believe. Please open up your eyes and see the real gift in me. I just want to sing. I just want to sing. I'm your host, Dr. Lisa Koiko, president of the City College of New York. As many of you know, March is Women's History Month. And to celebrate Women's History Month, our guest today is a Harlem legend. She is the writer and producer of the longest-running African-American musical, Mama, I Want to Sing. This year, Mama, I Want to Sing is celebrating its 30th anniversary. She is also the founder and executive director of the Mama Foundation for the Arts, whose headquarters are here in Harlem. Vi Higginson, welcome to WHCR and City Talk. It is my absolute pleasure to be here with you this morning. How are you? I am terrific. As the weather gets warmer and the days get longer, <laughs> my life gets happier. I understand. I'm with you on that. <laughs> um, but no, it's been wonderful, and it is so good to have you with us today. It's my pleasure. So tell us, Vi, how are you celebrating Mama's 30th anniversary? Mama's 30th anniversary. You know, it's really hard to believe that 30 it years. It seems like just yesterday. But we are going to celebrate in the place where we reside, which is the new Dempsey Theater. It's located right here in Harlem on 127th Street between Lenox and 7th Avenue. We have a 520-seat theater. We have a home, and I'm really grateful for that. And I want people to see our new spot. I want people to come up and sample our talent and sample our food because right outside our corridor is... Sylvia's Restaurant, Red right. Rooster, Corner Social, Shea Lucien, all right there so you can eat and go to the theater, and it's sort of our off-Broadway. And that's such a fantastic thing. You are right, because there are so many amazing Harlem eateries now. No. Um, mm. 
But even more than that, how important it is to have a home, isn't it? it it's so important to have a place where you can you know, incubate new material, uh, play material that people love. And at 30 years, you know, when I think about it, 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 it's dazzling because I saw in print, it said, America's longest running black musical. And it just really hit me that 30 years, not only did we play eight years in New York City, but we played two and a half years across the United States in every major and secondary city in the country. Mm. Then we went to Europe, Yugoslavia, Greece, Istanbul, Turkey, all over Italy and Germany and Switzerland. And then we went to Asia and we went to Japan. And, you know, and we've been going, you know, it's our, 20, it's our 30th anniversary in New York and our 25th anniversary in Japan. We've been going to Japan two to three times a year since uh, 1988. And think about, uh, it's so astounding uh, for anything to be relevant for 30 years. For anything, yeah. Right, right? Yeah. I mean, when you think, yeah. I have a 30-year-old son, so <laughs> you know, when I track his progress. Yeah. Um, but, but the fact that it's still so, so relevant. It's some, and it's, it's also hard to believe. You did ask me how we were going to celebrate. And this is the first time we've ever had a gala. Oh. And we thought it was uh, appropriate to have a gala now and not to forget this history and not forget these 30, that this 30 years happened. And, uh, but I was always a little shy, a little fearful about having a gallery, a, a, a gala. And so this time we decided, and then I started to reach out to say, okay, I can't do this by myself. I need some support. I need a benefit committee. Right. So I called Leslie Stoll from CBS 60 Minutes, and she said, I'd be delighted. So we're going to honor her that night because uh -huh. she did a story about the Gospel for Teens program. Now, I then called Aretha Franklin. Chaka Khan, <laughs> Shirley Caesar, Sissy Houston, all of them said, oh, we're so happy with your work and congratulations on the 30th. So these are people who are part of our beneficiary committee for that night. And so that's how we're going to celebrate. And we're going to include, it's Harlem inclusive. You see, this story happened in Harlem. It happened on 126th Street between Lenox and 7th. That's where we were born into. And my sister... Uh, wanted to sing, and my father was a minister, and so that's how we tell that story. And so we are going to celebrate. And the next generation is startling to me because the next generation really has the DNA of the original story because the star of the show is Noelle Higginson, who the story was written before she was born for a multi octave range, and I can hardly find that multi-octave range today. And she has it, and she's the star. And so the legacy continues oh. with the next generation. So I'm, listen, I, I turn it over to a power higher than me. I don't know how that happened, but I'm thrilled about it. That is thrilling. That is thrilling. That is thrilling. Yes. And, and what day is your gala? The gala is, at, you know what? I want you to be there. I love to be <laughs> Mark there. that date down. I, I want you to see this. Um, the date is the 23rd of March, okay. Saturday the 23rd. And then what we're going to do, we're going to have excerpts from our show, from Mama I Want to Sing, from Sing Harlem Sing, and the Gospel for Teens, the Emmy Award winning Gospel for Teens, will perform that night wow. as well as um, honoring our, our guest. And then we're going to have a taste of Harlem. All of those Harlem restaurants that I mentioned are contributing to the taste, so you'll get a chance to experience some of the food of our of our area and our what they call the classic corridor. <laughs> that is fabulous. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, for the listeners who haven't seen the musical, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit more about the musical itself? Yes. You see. You know, what, I, what we discovered in writing this musical with my husband, Ken Wydrow, is that this is a story of a family who has its roots in the church, but it's the story of American music. It's how music started in the church, found its way onto the radio, and then onto world stages. And that's why I think the story is so relevant even today, 30 years later, because the music 
really gives you a picture of who we are and where we come from musically. We take you back to an authentic choir rehearsal where the music master is insistent upon precision and excellence musically. And you watch that evolution of that music take place right in front of your eyes. And then you see how the music changes, how we have music from uh, uh, Lena Horne and Sarah Vaughan, mm. you know, and the greats and Billie Holiday. You get to see how the music evolved from the church and how the music was brought into the secular world and how this young girl was influenced by the music of the day. And so she was conflicted between the music that she was rooted in and the music of the day, but she wanted to sing the music of the day. So therein is the struggle between the tradition and the new, the mother and the daughter, and the music and the secular. It's a very interesting because, you know, we have all of these... Uh, television music shows, right? These music competitions. You have American yes, Idol, you yes. have The X Factor, you have The Voice. Yes. But very often among all of those, you many of, times often the finalists come out of gospel traditions. And Power pipes, so baby. So <laughs> many of those singers and you listen yes, to them and they yes. come out of strong yes. gospel church traditions. You know, it's true. So many of our inspired singers, when you look back over the history of music, and certainly I'm sure some of the music you play right here at this radio station, you have to look at those voices that touched you, that right. inspired you, that lifted you, that something about the power of the voice. And that's what Mama I Want to Sing is about. The voices, not the new way we do things with a lot of technology, but you are heard with the power of the sound of the voice. So a voice like Aretha Franklin, a voice like, um, you know, uh, Shirley Caesar or, or any of the other great stars of today are voices you rec recognize. You, you, he, you recognize by their sound how they discovered their own sound. So that's what Mama I Want to Sing does. And, you know, you recognize their voices whether they're singing a cappella. Right. Or whether they're singing against a whole background orchestra. of technology that's and right. orchestra. Right, exactly. And that's the one thing very often I notice, that there are some singers, they sound wonderful, but if you put them acoustically or uh -huh. you put them, uh -huh. that power is gone the because they need the technology around them where you come up from gospel roots singing in a choir in yes. that church. That power is part of your inner soul, yes, that's so it. to speak, that, that comes out. That soulful sound that often there was not a microphone and you right. had to reach the person in the back row. <laughs> you better have some power pipes. <laughs> and not only power pipes, but you also had to have the ability to touch the heart. Yes. You know, this is an authentic American art form. That's right. Gospel is uniquely 